For today's Member Spotlight on Stage 32, the world's largest social network for film, television, and digital creatives, we're chatting with Diego Cantu, a writer and producer from Los Angeles, California. Dude, thank you so much for meeting with me today. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I know that you have, you know, a background in the Latin American market. Um, I was wondering if you could just expand on your background. I was a big creative director for a big advertising agency. You know, I... My passion has always been film. And starting as a copywriter, I was blessed enough to to meet during my shoots. Granted, we were shooting Procter and Gamble, Disney stuff, not Disney, Disney commercials. I, I had the opportunity to to meet amazing directors that were actually doing big feature films. Yeah. You know? And one of those directors, I'm not going to say his name because he's very private he said it's like you should you should try writing like what are you talking about i'm a writer i write you know commercials and jingles <laughs> and i make good money right like no i think i think you have a certain sensitivity that could work for for hollywood you should and I, i've always wanted to do it but you know i didn't even know how to do it i had talked to him about an idea i had about writing a movie about my father and I had written which I didn't even know what it was back then but it, I had basically written an outline and this director was so taken by it that when the production wrapped he gave me a and this was when final draft actually came in a box with a disc it was like this is final draft this is what everybody in Hollywood uses this is my gift to and back then final draft was like 500 bucks remember it was super expensive it's like this is our gift to you and we really want you to to play with it and see what happens wow i got so and then of course he gave me final draft and he gave me story by mckee the book and he gave me which lie did i tell by william cole hmm. like read these two books you have what it takes go and it just it changed my life drastically to the point that i decided to um, quit like two years later um i found myself living in miami being the head of this advertising agency that was doing everything for general motors latin america and i quit i was just like you know this is not my passion this is not i had already hit the ceiling in advertising like my next step was either to open up an advertising agency i couldn't go anyhow and another contact through another production company said, hey, listen, there's a character named Jim McNamara and he's based in Miami and he's starting this company called Panamax Films. And basically Jim gave me the opportunity and that was my first job in the business. And I, wasn't, I was not head of content for that. I was the head of marketing. Head of marketing, okay. Because he says like, you have an amazing, you, you know how to buy media, you know, you know how marketing works because I had done you know, 18 years of advertising. So he, he gave me the position of being the head of marketing for Panamax. And I was there for two years. And the only reason I quit is because I just didn't like my I was just not happy. It was, it, it's, it was not good. But that gave me the opportunity to begin to analyze how, most importantly, how to market a movie. And, mm. you know, because Jim got me involved. The first movie we launched was a movie called uh, My Brother's Wife. La Mujer de Mi Hermano, based on a Peruvian novel. And I got involved on the marketing side since the, incept, since the producer said, I'm adapting this novel, I'm writing a script. So how do we begin marketing? So, you know, I read the script. At that point, I had already sold a script that never happened through that guy that gave me final draft. I gave him a project and he was like, we're going to move it internally in Hollywood. It just stayed in development. Hell, and it's still in development now. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> but you know, Jim knew I could, you know, I had a sensitivity to, to the screenwriting craft and, you know, I was helping the writers, you know, adapt from book to script and then casting and then production and then marketing and then posters and then working with studios like Lionsgate and how they market movies and how they're geniuses about marketing. So that gave me a little <laughs> bit of experience. Yeah. 
in the in the marketing world. And then Alex Garcia, which is a dear dear friend of mine, and probably my biggest mentor. Alex Garcia is probably the most prolific Latin American. He told me, "Hey man, uh, there's an opportunity here. We've been doing a lot of film, but we want to start the the, the television division, and I want you to to head it for me." And uh, and then that's where where you get the chops to be a showrunner because you know how short, even though you're working from the studio side, I had nothing to do with the productions that were happening with HBO, but from somebody sitting, you know, I began to understand what HBO was expecting from the writers, how the writers rooms worked, how production evolved, how everything was happening. And, and it was great. And, uh, and also, because I had grown up in the States and I was familiar with how Americans production worked also to understand how the side of the Latin American production side of things work and how everything in Mexico gets made with tax incentives to the government. So there's a lot of paperwork that you have to submit before you produce something so you can get some sort of incentive back from the government. Those, mm. that whole package of what you have to submit from the, from breakdowns to schedules, to budgets, to revisions, to budgets, to saying, okay, well, we're going to give you $7 million for this, but now we're going to give you three for this, and then going back to the writers and saying, you know what, you've got to rewrite this because we don't have that set over there in space anymore. How do we change this? So that gave me really an understanding of how the whole production side of things worked as a whole. Always writing on, my, on, on the side and still trying to, to, to sell my stuff. How did you find out about Stage 32? Thread on Script Revolution or somebody mentioned it to me. And then my manager, Sean Woods, I think he mentioned Stage 32 also in passing. But I never had really had the time until I think it was a thread on Script Revolution. Somebody, somebody, rec I guess there's a connection between Script Revolution and you guys or something. Maybe. There is. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's great. Good opportunities for people that have their foot in the door a little bit more to like guide and say, hey, listen, this is the way you do it. There's a lot of comments I see on the thread that, you know, people trying to pitch and people are like, hey, man, if you don't have a business plan, don't even bother pitching. And I'm like, that's so negative. It's not really true. Uh, yeah. You know, an idea is an idea. And if it's a solid idea and it's well packaged, you don't need a business plan. You know, it's too, it helps when you have somebody pushing you and helping you and opening the doors a little bit. But, you know, in my experience... You know, when you see something, when something resonates and touches you in a way, you grab it and you gravitate towards it. So I think it's a, it's, it's a very cool idea of a platform. Axel from Warner Media's 150, which is a great platform that Warner Media launched to basically maximize the power of up and coming content creators and, and, and putting them out there, you know. And Axel had reached out through social media, I think it was Instagram or Facebook, I don't remember, and said, and it was right at the beginning of quarantine. And he says, like, hey, during this trying times, what can we do to, uh, to keep creativity going? Yeah. And I immediately reached out to Axel, and I had met him through Nalip, which is a big, uh, you know, Latinx uh, producer's uh, workshop. Oh. And I said, hey, Axel, listen, I'm Diego. I think we met. My partners are Greg and Brad. And it's really funny how the insider started because the initial idea, because we knew we wanted to help the writers out there to keep the creative juices flowing and maybe help them a little bit financially. I said, it would be really cool. It's funny how ideas start one way and then they evolve to something completely different. But it, was like, <laughs> it would be really cool if we get you know, a bunch of your writers and each one writes two pages of the script, whatever he wants, emails it to another writer, he takes those two pages, continues that story, then we have four pages, those four, those four pages go to another writer. That, so we have like this like, you know, mashup of writers with a unifying storyline, creating this amazing script written by 20 people. Oh, wow. And that evolved to what The Insiders is now because, you know, Axel immediately, uh, and his team, he has an amazing team of people. I want to give him a shout out. Um, Alex Gutierrez, Axel Caballero, Gabriel Flor. They said, it's like, look, these are some amazing writers we have. And Greg immediately, 
because Greg is just spark of creativity. He was like, you know what? Let's just have the writers write five minute Zoom calls that go off the rails. And we can shoot that immediately. And I was like, dude, we gotta get cast. And you know, with all our friends and with all our connections, and Greg started making phone calls, and Greg knows everybody. <laughs> all of a sudden it was just like boom, 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 boom. We have scripts, we have this, and you know, we did the first five episodes. We partnered with Legion M. Great guys. Great, great guys. I was going to ask, actually, how that worked. Did, like, how did you find them and, and how did you Matt make that work? Media has had a relationship with oh, okay. them for a while and from the founders. So there was always a little spark about doing something together. And when they heard about what we were doing, they were like, hey, whatever we can do to put uh, fuel behind this, you know, and yeah. bring all our fan base, because, you know, Legion M is a fan base studio. Yeah. Uh, they were like, this is a great idea. Warner Media loved the idea of partnering with Legion M. And we decided to, to create the insiders. And it was really cool the way they did it because they were live Twitch streams where they would open with the whole cast, the showrunners, me, Brad, and Greg, and the writers. And it was just like this crazy Zoom call with all these people talking about how we started and how we met and remember we were shooting this and blah, 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 blah. And then there was a moderator from, uh, from Legion M. Oh. And then he would be like, this is great. This is something. Let's see the episode. And then he would run the episode. And then we would come back to the actors and the cast. And everybody in the Twitch platform was replying and asking questions and having ideas. What we asked Legion M to do to keep the fan base involved, it's like, these are the premises we're gonna be showcasing. We have this, this, this. What can you guys bring to the table knowing that this is the premise? So they came up with character names, they came up with situations. Uh, so we wanted to involve the fan base in a way. And it was great because it fit what the insiders was, which was this like together in creativity during trying times. And it was not only the writers and the cast, but also the fan base. Yeah. So we came up with new premises to figure out, and we, I cannot talk about it because we're going to premiere, we're in the middle of pre-production right now. But, Fair enough. <laughs> You know, using techniques that allow us to keep the cast safe, but also actually go ahead and shoot. So we have a studio and the studio has sets and we have a stage and we have a bar and we have an arcade and we have all these elements that we can use. The studio is obviously COVID safe. So we can bring some actors keeping them safe. But it's always the challenge of how are we going to shoot this with six feet of distance right. to avoid... So it's talking to the operators and talking to the crew and how are we going to shoot this to keep everybody safe? So now we're shooting like at locations, but we're shooting through windows with long lenses, drones. We're even using backup cameras of the cars. Oh, wow. Yeah. To, to shoot because we need movement. So it's like, hey, the car has a camera. The car can be a dolly. Let's figure out how to hook up the audio and have a better resolution. And also plug in a phone to where the cam and actually use the car as, you know, camera so that's we're in the yeah. middle of that and it's it's been great it's been an awesome project and we're super grateful to warner media and everything they're doing is like they're donating to the cost it's like 500 like a bunch of millions of dollars to the actors fund oh, wow. a bunch of donations for the writers fund they're really trying to keep people not losing hope because you see a lot of you see this black horrible cloud over hollywood like what's gonna happen yeah how are we gonna and you know this is a small show that's in the process of hopefully becoming something bigger but you know what's happening to the mandalorians and to the all those big shows that basically have a break on right now because everybody's yeah. trying to figure out and i think only good things are going to come out of this because you know uh dark times always fuel creativity i believe yes so uh so yeah that's where we are right now and it's it's been a process, but it's been a great, great process. We're really happy. And, and it, has keep, it keeps us sane also because we've been in our houses for four months. <laughs> and it's really funny because we've become this super tight family. We have a writer's room now, which all oh. the writers that Warner Media provided to us. 
uh, the cast that you saw the first five episodes of The Insiders would become this like a family. Yeah. We haven't seen each other. <laughs> we have not been together. Everything has been through computers and Zoom and phone calls and texts. And it's, <laughs> it's really funny to, to manage a writer's room when we have a writer in New York, a writer in Austin, a writer in Chicago, three writers in LA, and they're all collaborating and coming together and, 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 and working together without us being at the studio in the writer's room table. And you know, the table reads, we do it with a cast over Zoom, and a lot of great things happen. We've been recording everything because, you know, Warner Media is packaging this to us. Now that you've first produced on Zoom, like, what do you wish you had known before it had started so that you could kind of better prepare for the, the Zoom you know, I think interface? It's a, learning pro- it's a learning curve. And, you know, the, you know, we figured a lot of things that were not working. So even though what you see uh, looks like Zoom, we actually had to go back. And even though 50, 60 percent of what you're seeing on camera is actual Zoom footage, we actually have sent documents to the to the to the cast say, you know what, it's going to help. It, it, it's an editing thing. This thing would have not have worked without Brad Savage and his editing skills because they have no coverage. So it, it, it's what yeah. you have. It was very limiting to just have squares of people that look like the Brady Bunch opening. <laughs> so we, we have to like tell the actors, like, you know what, use the Zoom camera, but also we want you to place your phone here because we need coverage on this side. So a lot of the footage you see there is coming from the actor's phone wow but they're shooting themselves uh we had to match everything uh the audio has been complicated so we also need them to do like you know backup tracks on their iphone record them everything gets sent to brad uh, via dropbox he takes all the elements so even though it looks very simple it's been a production process and it's been a learning curve for us to figure out how to actually shoot this uh the the Billy the Botanist episode, where you oh, have yes. this, which is hilarious. <laughs> it was not working the way we had intended because people were jumping each other's lines. There was lag on Zoom. So we actually had to shoot each of those squares individually. Right. With just our script. And it's, it's great. We're, we're, we're very excited. We're, we're very excited where this can potentially go. And working together with Warner Media from Zoom, trying to package this whole thing and saying, what is the insiders? Because we're using all these episodes and the coming ones to build a case study to see this deserves to have its own show because there's nothing like it really. Yeah. So it's almost like my mentality about it. Uh, Aaron Sorkin created a show about 20 years ago that was way ahead of its time, and it only lasted one season, but it was called Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip. I don't know if you remember. I, I, mean, I remember it so well that I made a post about it in the community because I was like, for those of you who don't know, it yeah. looked a lot like after that pilot episode, the FCC might have gotten involved and said, you can only attack us once even in narrative form, because there was a lot of the writing after that, that they, they just pulled back on the reins hard. So yes, I know it well. And I think the insiders is evolving. So obviously Studio 60 was scripted, but the great thing about Studio 60, what it really invited the viewer to step in into the, how a show works. Yeah. How you have writers, how they have issues, well, one guy cannot get insured because he has a drug problem, I mean, he doesn't get insured, the show cannot get produced, and all this drama. The Insiders is that, because we're actually, when this show hopefully happens, you're going to see the writers and the cast figuring out, brainstorming, how do we do this, this is not working, the fight. So it's almost Studio 60 on script, you know, because we're going to have the real cast. It's almost like the real world meets Saturday Night Live. We've been breaking the fourth wall thanks to Legion M because we've had, you know, FaceTime with the fan base and collaborating with the fan base in real time and taking notes as the comments come through Twitch saying, hey, did you see that comment? That's a great idea to drop into the next sketch. 
Thanks for joining us today. If you want to connect with other inspiring media professionals, join the worldwide Stage 32 community by signing up at stage32.com.